So I'm Robert Hand from the Green Lusk and my father was Robert Hand. Now across the road was the Hand household, the, the old farmstead that would have been my uh, maiden aunt Ailish and the bachelor Thomas Hand, all long dead. But my mother was a McCann and she was from Lusk and not only was, was she a McCann, one of my one of my aunts was also, one of my uncles was also McCann, Michael McCann. So we had an extraordinary family, both from Lusk and yet intermarried that there was a brother and sister on each. So this is where I look to my, to my McCann's roots. And I, I took it back to the 1901 census when I discovered that on the back lane, which is just over there, the McCann house is still there to this day and one member of the McCann family still lives in that house. And back in 1901, there were eight children listed, but there actually was nine. The ninth was somewhere else, but he had to be there on census night. And the mother and father and the grandfather all lived. So in this little house that only one person lives today, there were 11 living at that moment in time. So. It was no wonder that my, my sister was speaking to her last night and she said, oh, one of them is a groom because she's into the horses today. But I said, look, the wonder was that there weren't more grooms because next door to us here was Remount Depot, Depot Lusk Remount Depot. And it, it catered for up, anting up to 200 horses and 100 troopers at any one time before World War I started and most of them went abroad, although a lot of the, the, the soldiers would have been of, of, of military age, they were, they were recruited for being older and for being uh, horse interest, not just the ordinary regular Joe. But most of the McCanns were, were for agricultural labourers because the other great advantage that there was to having a remount farm, it was like a gold mine in as much as uh, Father for the horses and food for the troopers, the, the, the local farmers couldn't keep up with it. And another thing I've only researched very recently is that Lusk was a unique in another facet. That all around the other towns and villages, there were landlords. There was Palmer and Rush and Holm Patrick and thing. And it was at an event in Scarries by the Balbriggan Historical Society. And this was this new thing come up that it was noted that there were no landlords in Lusk. So it was way ahead of its time in the fact that this whole area, and Lusk was a bigger parish than it is today, that it, it was all owned by farmers, or our own farmers, not by landlords, who could turf you out on a whim, and did do it. One man, woman researcher told us that the, the son was in trouble in 1916, and the mother got turfed out in her ear. That was how it was. There was no uh, court to go to to get justice. That was reality. So you always had to be tummed to, to, to the landlord. So uh, out of that, my, my grandfather, up, up here where we'll be shortly, uh, you notice two gravestones right beside each other. One is uh, John Rover McCann and the other one is my my grandfather, his brother, Daniel McCann. Now, their, their, their father was also Daniel McCann. This was quite common, that the names were repeated and repeated. This was why they used, had to use second names, because it, it was so confusing. Are you talking about the father or the grandfather? Even to such an extent that a cousin of mine, who's very big into the whole thing, like Eamon, of visiting graveyards for the facts, she has says that there is a, a logic that when naming the males of the family, the first male was named after the grandfather on the father's side. The second male was named after the grandfather on the maternal side. The third child was named after the oldest uh, the, of the father. And the subsequent uh, uncles, uncles, brothers were named after the uncles. Now, I'm not sure if it was on the maternal side only or the paternal side, but it is a lot. You can actually see the whole same names, like in our case, Daniel keeps popping up all through the generations. This is the monument erected by the people of Fingal 
particularly uh, Dan Cherry and Charlie Hurley. He died on the eve after Bloody Sunday, within the same 24 hour period. He was uh, at home with his wife, who was expecting her third child, when they burst in at 2.30 in the morning. Now accounts differ as to what exactly happened subsequently, but it wasn't until some hours later that the actual shots were fired. And even later before anybody would venture to see, they obviously knew he was dead. Uh, but local uh, sailors from Rush carried him home on a, a tray of some sort. Uh, so he had been with Thomas Ash at Ashbourne. Uh, he was supposed to have distinguished himself well there, but then um, I would think no more than any, uh, any other of the, uh, the great men. And next to it is his brother, my grandfather, Daniel McCann. And again, that McCann had another large family. And as I say, a brother and sister of, of Daniel McCann married a sister and brother of the Hand from Lusk. The comedian Brendan O'Carroll, his grandfather, was killed in the same month as Rover McCann in much similar circumstances where they came for him at 2.30 in the morning and he knew what was the expected and, but they plugged him in seconds and left. Uh, but in the course of that uh, uh, interview, he ex explained something that I'd not been aware of at the time, but it made sense now that six, six months before, earlier, in July, the British had changed the system. Instead of being the normal cor coroner that we're used to, that had to be for any kind of violent death, there now was a military tribune uh, of three officers. But of course, nobody was g going to turn up. And in Brenner Carl's case, nobody from the family went to this thing, so the British were able to put their spin on what had happened to his father. Now, in, in the case of my, my grandfather, at that time they were living up in Banbridge County Down with his young family too. And however he got the news, because he was missing for over a fortnight, and it, it turned out that it was because of this coroner's court that he, according to my mother, attended that uh, there was such a delay in the burial of his brother. Uh, they had to go through all these formalities and they, the British weren't going to be easy on you. If you're a brother of, 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 of a known rebel, well, you were subject to the same problems as him. Indeed, my mother tells me I can't uh, speak as to their accuracy of quite a few things that happened to her in Banbridge County Down or to the family where there was constant raids uh, it included two mock executions. Now, at the time it sounded dreadful to me when she first told me, but uh, on reflection now, I believe that this would have been quite usual, this mock e execution thing. So the families would know that it's not, this may not be for real, but then can you take a chance? They, they line you up with 11 fellows with rifles and they're going to shoot you and it's only that one of them will say, oh no, we'll let him, give him another day, we'll come back again. And you're let off. But it's very traumatic. My mother recounts that her, her mother, Daniel's wife, had only just given birth to a, a, another child, the yearly child, and she had to stand in front of her husband out in the yard where this mock execution was going on. But the odd thing is that, that Although, uh, while I suggest that maybe it wasn't as traumatic as it, it seems first, because another incident happened that she told me about, that to, as a family, they found it more traumatising. There was one particular British soldier who was persistent and constant, always uh, in their face as regards where's the, granny, the father's gun. He would offer sweets to the children, to tell where the gun was because 
the older kids would certainly know if there was if where the gun was buried. Uh, but on one occasion, this fella turned up at the house drunk, and it was very unusual because he always made sure that there was a number of them to protect each other. <coughs> but next thing, he fell down and knocked himself out, and they didn't know how bad he was. And the logic from them was. It doesn't matter what happens from this point in, we're going to get blamed. So they actually debated whether they shouldn't finish him off because at least then they'll have some satisfaction because they were going to get the bother. So for hours he was unconscious. And then he came to, staggered to his feet and hobbled off home as if nothing was up. Talking about Brendan O'Carroll again is the, that the, the what they needed to do, he walked, my, my Daniel McCann, like many of them, they walked on the railway, and that's how he ended up in Banbridge. You, you didn't get a choice, you were being sent to Banbridge. It, it could have been uh, uh, the Siberia, as far as he'd be concerned, going up there. Yet, on the other hand, it wasn't that much, that extraordinary, because a brother of Sean, John, his name was James. He had joined the British Army long before World War I, and he'd served in Aden, and he'd served in India. He was, but the unusual thing was, he was in the Royal Irish Rifles, which was predominantly a Protestant uh, brigade, whereas you would have expected he would have joined one of the Southern Brigades, that would have been the Dublin Brigade or wherever, but now, he ended up one of the earliest casualties of World War I. He, he died in, in, in December 1914, somewhere in France. And I had researched it, and I could find no battle that took place there. Talking with the archivist, in as much as there was no body to bury, it indicates to me that it was an artillery shell, because if you hit by an artillery shell direct, you, it would be picking up the pieces. So he's buried somewhere in France in an, in an unknown grave. Um, so it's extraordinary that back here in Ireland, some years later, his brother was, was going to fight and die for Ireland, as it says on the monument, while his brother was fighting and dying, dying for King in, in, in Flanders. The brilliant thing for me is that these two fine statues are beside each other. And that's my connection with the McCann family and uh, one of the other reasons I'm so proud of my native place, Lusk.